I'd like to introduce my next special guest, uh, my friend Dawn Turner. Uh, hi Dawn and thank you for being part of the podcast. Hi Rachel. I wanted to have a little chat with you about um, one of the conversations that we had when uh, I was over in Boston and you were back home and I'd just been to the one of the harbour museums and seen the Blaschka glass models of plants which was absolutely mind-blowing they got over 4,000 glass models of different flowers and you knew all about this uh, this maker didn't you? I did yes um, I can remember you were incredibly you know, amazed by the work as was I the first time I came across them but I hadn't seen much of the flowers all the work I'd seen was the um, sea uh, were, were animals and sea creatures and things. Ah uh, yes don't they have them um... A couple of those in um, in Nottingham. Yes, there's. Um, they've got an octopus in Woolerton Hall Museum. Um, they may have other pieces, but I'd, I, I remember the octopus because I drew it as part of uh, our university drawing skills days, um, oh, and right. it just absolutely fascinated me. Wow, I think these models were commissioned for Harvard, um, and I think it, it says something like over 800 species with even within large flower parts so I think it was so that people could study them at all times and they're just amazing. Uh, do you know a bit uh, about the makers? Um, yes I know um, I know it's a father and son. The, the colours on, on them were absolutely amazing. Yes. I know that I remember that some it said were cold painted were with coloured glass and then others were heated and then fused onto the model yes. so and I know you use fusing within I use fusing yes yeah. so um, could you just explain a bit about the process of fusing fusing two pieces of glass together the Blaschka um, son and uh, father used lamps with bellows oil lamps that's why it was called originally called lamp working because the, they used to use oil lamps um, with a flame to, um, and bellows to generate more heat oh. um, so they melt the glass they work they manipulate the glass while it's molten and, and it, you can stick it together you can stick the parts together the process i use um, is is fusing where glass goes into a kiln of uh, cold um, mm -hmm. then i program the kiln it goes up to around 800 degrees centigrade even though it's called a warm glass technique um, i think 800 is quite hot yeah um, <laughs> And um, the glass fuses together, um, and you can you can heat it up to different temperatures to get diff uh, either smooth effects or, or textured effects. Um, and then it has a controlled cool down in the kiln, a technique called um, a process called annealing, um, which takes all the stress out of the glass. And the glass is controlled in the cool down, um, so all the molecules settle down. Um, and then the glass comes back out of the kiln cold, and it's um, it's completely transformed from two sheets or, or however many pieces of glass into one solid piece. So it's amazing to think that in the Victorian eras that they were fusing this glass together, but then today's artists are still using similar techniques. So what do you make with this fusing technique? Um, I make all sorts of, um, all sorts of things from uh, bowls and dishes to picture frame, pictures, coasters, some catches. Uh, I've made jewellery in the past, um, Christmas decorations. If I can make it from glass, I will do. Wow. And what are the sort of, because uh, the colours that the, the Blaschka father and son team were getting, uh, they were trying to emulate exactly what the colours were in nature. So when you're, um, I'm going to imagine it like painting with, with glass, but you're using actual physical pieces of glass. So how much control over the colour of your art pieces do you have? That's variable uh, because we have some glasses called striking glasses, which um, look one colour when they're cold and when they're in their pre-fired state. So um, they can be, uh, there's, there's certain colours in particular, the, the hot colours tend to do it. So there's some that be almost clear or a pale yellow or pale orange. And once they're fired, they change colour to bright orange or deep red. Um, so sometimes you can pick up a piece of glass and, uh, and think you've made something with oranges and yellows and you find out you've made it with red wow. yeah. <laughs> so it's always important to label your glass <laughs> yeah <laughs> i imagine it would be so um 
that's that's amazing to to think that these techniques are still going strong and um is there somewhere if people are interested to have a look at some of the pieces that you make with the fusing technique um is there somewhere that uh, listeners can go to to have a look so the best place to go is to have a look on my website uh, which is www.dawnturnerdesigns.co.uk thank you for listening And don't forget to join me for the next episode where I land in Provincetown. Spirit of Mayflower is part of a series celebrating my Spirit of Mayflower project. You can get involved in lots of ways. You can take a look at some of the movies and pictures I took on my journey by heading to the Rachel Carter Sculpture Facebook page. You can also head to my website at www.rachelcarter.co.uk and there you'll be able to view some of the sculptures I make, treat yourself to a limited edition Pilgrim Woman sculpture, or take a look at some of the online tutorials 